Hi, and thank you for joining us here at Living Life. You know, one of the things I like to do during my spare time is to read or watch um, documentaries on famous athletes. And usually there's a similar pattern that happens with a lot of these athletes. Uh, they start off from a very humble beginning where they grew up in a very rural background uh, somewhere in the country. And they had this passion and this amazing talent for a certain sport. And so because of that drive and because they're able to exercise uh, their talent, they're able to excel um, on the collegiate level and then they really do uh, very well uh, when they become a professional athlete. And usually what happens is over time they start off uh, very humble, uh, very shy, but then as they become superstars, as they gain more attention from the world, uh, I start to see this change taking place where they become you know, more arrogant or more confident or uh, they think that they've really done something to ar arrive at where they are. Uh, but there's one athlete that I've been watching and even though he came from a very humble background, even as a superstar athlete, he still remains humble. And I remember one time there was an interview where the reporter was asking him all these questions about the streak that he was on, uh, a very personal streak that he was able to accomplish. And so the reporter is asking, you know, how does it feel? And all he could respond was, it's all God. Uh, God gave me this talent and God allowed me to perform the way I did today and over a period of time. And this left the reporter speechless. And uh, they asked again, so you had nothing to do with it? And again, he replied, no, it wasn't about me. It's all about God. And he gave all the credit to God. And that really amazed me. I was very encouraged to see that. And we'll see in today's passage how David gives all the credit to God for what he's accomplished in his life. Second Samuel chapter 7 verses 18 through 29 Then King David went in and sat before the Lord and he said Who am I O sovereign Lord and what is my family that you have brought me this far And as if this were not enough in your sight O sovereign Lord you have also spoken about the future of the house of your servant is this your usual way of dealing with man, O Sovereign Lord? What more can David say to you? For you know your servant, O Sovereign Lord. For the sake of your word and according to your will, you have done this great thing and made it known to your servant. How great you are, O Sovereign Lord! There is no one like you, and there is no God but you, as we have heard with our own ears. And who is like your people Israel, the one nation on earth that God went out to redeem as a people for himself, and to make a name for himself, and to perform great and awesome wonders by driving out nations and their gods from before your people, whom you redeemed from Egypt? You have established your people Israel as your very own forever, and you, O Lord, have become their God. And now, Lord God, keep forever the promise you have made concerning your servant and his house. Do as you promised, so that your name will be great forever. Then men will say, The Lord Almighty is God over Israel, and the house of your servant David will be established before you. O Lord Almighty, God of Israel, you have revealed this to your servant, 
saying, "I will build a house for you." So your servant has found courage to offer you this prayer. O sovereign Lord, you are God. Your words are trustworthy, and you have promised these good things to your servant. Now be pleased to bless the house of your servant, that it may continue forever in your sight. For you, O sovereign Lord, have spoken, and with your blessing, the house of your servant will be blessed forever. And so, as we find ourselves here in Second Samuel chapter seven, at the second half of this passage,、uh, we find David giving thanks to God.、Uh, we see how much gratitude is welling up in his heart that he can't help but express it to his God. And so, God has made this covenant with David, saying that through you there will always be someone from your line、uh, in the kingdom、uh, for eternity. And it will be established forever. And so, when David hears this,、uh, he can't help but really give thanks to God in this prayer that he offers up to Him. So, if you look closely at this portion portion of Scripture, you'll see David、uh, repeatedly referring to the Lord God、uh, in his prayer as he gives thanks to what、um, the Lord has done through his life. And so,、um, there's a story of a wife. Of a major league pitcher, and so what started out when they were dating in high school is that whenever he was in the dugout, he would step out and he would、uh, scan through the crowd and he would look for his girlfriend at the time, and then nod his head as he acknowledged her, and this went on for about 30 years、uh, as he continued、um, on to his college and on to becoming a professional pitcher. Uh, he would always step out, and he would always look for his wife to know that she's there, and he would acknowledge her, and then he would step back, step back into the dugout,、uh, being secure, knowing that、uh, she, her presence was with with him、uh, throughout his career. And so she went on to say how special she felt, knowing that、uh, she was receiving that kind of attention. Uh, from him, that this was a, a pers- personal interaction that they had、uh, between themselves, as he acknowledged her in the stands. And I think, in the same way,、uh, when we acknowledge God,、uh, He feels、uh, as though we are giving Him the credit, and He、uh, loves well, when His people acknowledge Him、uh, throughout what they're doing. And so, we need to ask ourselves:、um, Do we take the time? To thank and to acknowledge God for what He has done in our lives,、uh, because as David is giving thanks to God, because he knows that God will keep His promise, as he has seen from history, as he's seen from his own life, he knows、um, that God is faithful and that God will deliver the things that He has promised unto David. And so he's giving thanks to Him, acknowledging that God has done, and as David knows. Firsthand,、uh, what God has been doing in his life, but not only is he giving thanks, but we see David as a servant. And one of the things that stands out、uh, to me in this passage is how David constantly refers to himself as a servant、um, all throughout these verses.、Uh, you find it repeated、uh, about nine times in this passage alone. And this prayer、uh, shows the humility of David. Uh, on behalf of how he's able to stay humble before God, it's because he knew his identity. He knew that more than being a king, that he saw himself as a child of God, as a servant of God, and that was his identity. He understood how great God is, and that there is no other God like Him. And so, after he's reminded of what took place in his life, how God has promised. That、uh, his kingdom will last forever. We see David's gratitude and humility、um, as he's expressing it in his prayer, and so David understands that、uh, he's nothing without God in his life. And so, in the life of David, he sees himself as a man who is there to serve God. He is not just a king, but he realizes his role as a servant before the Lord. 
And it's encouraging to see that in the life of David, that no matter how much he's been blessed, uh, no matter how much he's enjoyed success in his life, he's still able to remain humble. He knows and realizes that all the source of all these blessings and all his success comes from God alone. And so he hasn't let this power and the success in, in his life get to his head. That it doesn't cloud his judgment. It doesn't think of it, he doesn't think of himself more highly than he ought. But rather we see how lowly he presents himself to God and to his and to the people around him. And so how do we see ourselves uh, as we look in the mirror, as we see um, how others treat us? Uh, are we able to stay grounded? Do we see our position before God as a child and as a servant? Uh, sometimes we can let our titles become a source of pride for us, whether we're called deacons or elders or pastors or teachers or doctors. Uh, rather than letting these titles define us, uh, I like how um, one person described that we should just call one another brothers and sisters. And that should be the only title that we have uh, because all these things are nothing in the eyes of God. We need to see ourselves and one another as equals and that we are all uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. And I love that idea because that reminds us of our identity, which is in Christ. So just as a reminder, uh, let's always learn to give thanks and praise to God. Um, when we pray, that it's not all about the petition or the intercession, but also taking the time uh, to really give thanks and realizing that God is the source of all that we do and that our identity is in Christ and that we are called uh, a child and a servant of the living God. So let me pray for that on behalf of today's passage. Father, we thank you uh, for the love that was manifested to us um, on the cross, that your son, Jesus Christ, saw his identity um, as a servant, as he came not to be served, but to serve and to, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Uh, we thank you for that sacrifice. We thank you for the heart of Christ. And we pray that we too can have that same heart, that same desire uh, to make you known uh, wherever we go and whatever we do. Uh, may you receive all the glory. And in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.